بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. I'd like to offer some advice to the new Muslim. First by saying congratulations. And this is because of myself having that unique experience of having left Dhulamat al nur meaning darkness to the light of Islam. And from the advice I would like to offer, the first thing being that it's important to know the purpose in life, which is to worship Allah alone. That Tawheed, that Allah is the Lord and creator and sustainer of everything, that we direct all of our worship, our supplication, our prayer, our fasting, our pilgrimage, all to Allah and all for Allah. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes that he describes himself within the Quran and we affirm them as Allah has described them in the Quran and as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has described them in the authentic sunnah alayhi salatu wa salam. And so that's the first piece of advice is knowing the purpose in life. And Allah says in this regard, I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here has decreed for us his purpose for creating us, our purpose in life, our direction, our goal, which is to worship Allah alone. And if you remember that for the rest of your life, then that will help you as a source, be a source of guidance for you, that you shouldn't be without purpose. You shouldn't be bored. You shouldn't be lost about what you should do, but rather you should have all of your goals and all the things that you do should be in accordance with that, meaning the worship of Allah alone. And that's also a source of guidance for you when you hear other people say to you, for example, that you should have a sheikh or a marid, or someone like this, and that you should have a picture of them and cry when you see the picture, or that you should reflect upon them. Because all of these things go against Islam. The Islamic creed that is pure, coming from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, directs you to worship Allah alone. We don't worship Jesus wasallam. We don't worship Muhammad wasallam. We don't worship Moses, Ibrahim alayhim. Nor do we worship the angels or anything or anyone else. But all of our worship goes to Allah. The second thing, which is very important as a new Muslim, because we often have a lot of zeal and a lot of excitement embrace in, after embracing Islam or while embracing Islam or what have you, you should direct that zeal for seeking knowledge. Knowledge of of who Allah is and how to worship Him properly. And everything in Islam, everything which is considered worship, must be directed to Allah, sincerely to Allah, the only God worthy of worship. And it should be in accordance with the sunnah or the way of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, how he worshiped Allah. So we should not go beyond that. And we should not uh, do less than that, but do the best to put our energy and our knowledge into practice to the best of our ability in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so that requires for us knowledge. Knowledge is the place to put that zeal. Don't get excited about political causes. Don't get involved in protest and things like that which distract you from the worship of your Lord. But rather it's imperative that you learn your new faith and you direct your energy into worshiping your Lord and knowing who He is and knowing how to worship Him properly. Because that's what's going to benefit you if your life were to suddenly end. You're going to be asked about that, but you won't be asked about which political party you were, you were uh, affiliated with, which protest you attended, and which cause you helped uh, advance. But rather, you're going to be asked about who your Lord is, who your prophet was, and what was your faith? 
you know, what was your religion? Those are the questions you'll be asked in the grave, as was affirmed by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the authentic hadith. So this brings up the point that that zeal should be put into knowledge. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized knowledge, that knowledge was the way to paradise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمَسُهُ بِهِ عَلْمًا سَحَ اللَّهُ لَهُ طَرِيكًا لَلْجَنَّةِ Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Islamic knowledge, then Allah will make easy for him the path of paradise. And the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ يَرَدُ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُتَقُوا فِي الدِّينَ Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. And the early scholars, they used to say, طلب العلم طلب الجنة That the person who seeks knowledge is seeking paradise, in fact, because it requires sincerity. And it requires that you do it in accordance with how the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ uh, did it and illustrated for us. And it is an act of worship actually when you seek knowledge of Islam, if you do it with sincerity. And so this understanding of the religion should be your utmost priority as a new Muslim. And a final advice is always maintain your prayer. Your prayer is your communication between you and Allah. And ask for His guidance. Call upon Him. And know that Allah exists and Allah can fulfill your needs and assist you with all of your problems. And that this will be the cause for your success and for you to stay Muslim through all the trials and tribulations. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the one of the signs of a person tasting the sweetness of faith is that they hate to go to disbelief after they have tasted the sweetness of iman, of faith. That once they've entered being a Muslim and they've felt that comfort in their heart and they understand who their Lord is and begin to worship Him properly, that the worst thing that they can think of is renouncing their faith and going back to disbelief, similar to the way they would hate to be thrown in the fire. So this shows us the importance of maintaining that relationship with Allah, your Lord, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ikhlas, with sincerity and thabat and firmness of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And may Allah bless us to follow the early pious predecessors of this nation, which were the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, and their example on how they understood and practiced and transmitted this beautiful knowledge and this beautiful deen of Islam, this religion of Islam. وصلى الله وسلم على